Hi, we're going to talk about the urea cycle in this video. Now, the purpose of the urea cycle is to excrete the built up ammonium within our body from ingested proteins. Now, the majority of those proteins are going to be recycled for building amino acids, or very minutely, they're going to be used for catabolism for energy. Uh, the rest are going to be excreted in the form of urea within mammals. Okay? Now, a couple of things about urea to discuss is the fact that it's going to take place in hepatocytes within the liver. So all the ammonium built up inside your body is going to be transported into your liver uh, to be excreted out in the form of urea. Now within the hepatocytes, the urea cycle actually takes place not only within the mitochondria, but also the cytosol. Okay. Um, another thing to talk about with the urea cycle is the fact that we are going to be excreting two ammonium molecules that are introduced into the urea cycle in two distinct steps, the first and second, but we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, speaking about steps, there are going to be four basic steps, which is the good news, there are just four steps. However, the names of these uh, substrates and enzymes are kind of long and complicated. So this is the first time you're hearing, you might want to take special note of it. Okay. So we're going to start off the urea cycle at that first step of carbamyl phosphate or carbamoyl, carbamoyl phosphate. So kind of think back to the TCA cycle where you had acetyl-CoA combining with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Kind of the same concept, but with different names and different molecules. Instead of acetyl-CoA, we have the carbamoyl uh, phosphate, and instead of oxaloacetate, we now have ornithine. All right. Now, carbamoyl phosphate and ornithine are going to combine in the enzyme um, ornithine transcarboxylase. Okay. So within the enzyme ornithine transcarboxylase carbamoyl phosphate and ornithine are going to combine to create citrulline. Citrulline is going to be our um, analog, analog is structured to that citrate from the TCA. So instead of acetyl-CoA, you have carbamoyl phosphate. Instead of oxaloacetate, we have ornithine. Instead of citrate, we now have citrulline. Okay. Now here's where um, the parallels between the TCA and the urea cycle kind of differ, okay? That citrulline is not going to stay within the mitochondria of the hepatocyte. It's actually going to be transported out into the cytosol, all right? It's actually going to be shunted directly into the next enzyme, which is called arginosusinate synthetase, all right? If um, you think of the name, you can actually tell that this is going to create arginosusinate. How it does that is a little complicated, so this second step is actually going to be divided into two processes. All right, first we need to activate that citrulline via the addition of ATP. Now I know what you're thinking, you add ATP, you're going to put a phosphate group on that citrulline. Um, if this was any normal reaction, you'd be correct. However, this time uh, the pyrophosphate is going to be uh, kicked off of the ATP. And the whole molecule of AMP is actually going to replace the uredo oxygen of that citrulline. So now, instead of having citrulline, we have a molecule called either citrulline AMP or citrullyl AMP. Both of those are the same intermediates, so you probably should recognize both names. Okay, So that's going to be the activated form, the activated intermediate. Now we're going to have the addition within that same second step, within that same arginosusinate synthetase, we're going to have the addition of that second ammonium, that second nitrogen, all right, in the form of aspartate. Aspartate, aspartate came from the mitochondria, and it was shuttled out into the cytosol as well. Okay, It's going to combine with the citrulline to form, you guessed it, arginosusinate. Okay. Now, the arginosusinate is now going to be shunted to the next enzyme in the urea cycle. And the purpose of that, of uh, this next enzyme, is to cleave arginosusinate. So, try to guess that name of the enzyme. 
uh, the name of the enzyme is actually going to be arginosuccinase. All right, fairly straightforward here. It's going to cleave arginosuccinate into a molecule of arginine, and it's actually going to cleave. Uh, think of the name arginosuccinate is going to cleave into yeah fumarate because we want to confuse this crap out of you. So instead of arginine and succinate, it's going to cleave arginosuccinate into an arginine and a fumarate. Okay. Um, as a little side note, fumarate is going to go leave within the cytosol and it's going to be used for a gluconeogenesis. The fumarate is going to turn to malate, oxaloacetate, yada yada yada. Go back to gluconeogenesis. But we're focused on that arginine because if we add a if we add an oxygen to that ureto functional group, we actually form urea. And that's exactly what we do in the next enzyme. That last enzyme in this last step is going to be called arginase because we're cleaving arginate. So we're going to add a, a, a water molecule in H2O. We're going to add that oxygen to the ureto uh, functional group to that carbon and create urea. Now when we take out that ureto group from the arginine, we're creating the molecule ornithine. And that's where it starts all over from the start. Okay. 